Awareness, the final frontier. These are the explorations of Jonathan Robinson and Brian Tom O'Connor. Their continuing mission, to discover fresh new paths to the mystery within, to seek out new joys and new methods of awakening, to boldly go into the heart of expanded consciousness. This is Awareness Explorers. Welcome, welcome. This is episode one of Awareness Explorers. I'm Jonathan Robinson, and this is... Brian Tom O'Connor. We're glad to have you back. We uh, did our first episode, which is called Episode Zero, explaining a little bit about what Awareness Explorers is about and what we're going to do. Just uh, in 20 seconds, we're here to explore the nature of awareness and how we can integrate it into our daily lives, practicing lots of different ideas and methods. And we won't be fully happy until you're absolutely uh, one with awareness. So that's our goal and for ourselves and hopefully for you as well. So I thought in this session, we'd start off, Brian, by maybe giving a few definitions of what awareness is and just as important, what awareness is not, and why this whole exploration is so important. So what's your hit on that? Oh, thanks, Jonathan. And uh, great to be with you again this week. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to talk a little bit about what is awareness, because in normal everyday language, we usually think of awareness as awareness of something, like uh, National uh, Pet Appreciation Awareness Week or something like that. Uh, and we're not actually talking about what we're aware of when we talk about awareness. We're talking about what everything that we experience happens in, the background of awareness. So it's a little bit of a tricky concept for a lot of people at first. Because when you look for awareness, you might not know what you're looking for. So let me talk a little bit about what awareness is, and then I'll talk about what awareness isn't. So first, what is awareness? Awareness is what's noticing your current experience. Awareness is what everything you can possibly notice appears in. And awareness is the noticing of everything that can be noticed, including the noticing itself. It's also what doesn't change when everything else in your experience changes. It's the background of your experience. It's the background of everything you notice. Awareness is what's looking. It's what's hearing. Awareness is also what thought appears to and what sensations appear to and what emotions appear to. And awareness is that thing that has never changed since you were a little child. So that part of you that's noticing your experience that's the same when you were five as it is now, that's awareness. You know, an analogy I find is useful when I'm talking to friends that aren't so familiar with this is the flashlight analogy. You know, a flashlight is shining its light on objects, on things, but it doesn't normally shine its light on it, you know? And uh, awareness is like the flashlight. It, it helps illuminate everything, but you can actually, as a human being, put your attention back on the flashlight, on the awareness, and that's where peace and love and joy, or what Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven, is within. And right. when people get that concept, they often, it's like a light bulb going off in their head. I imagine that most of our listeners have had that experience, like, oh my gosh, there's this thing which is really my true nature that I am, that usually I am not aware of because it's so background, it's so always there that I don't pay attention to it. But when you start paying attention to it, it illuminates everything in a new way and it opens a door like a portal to 
uh, a whole new universe of peace and love and joy that most people rarely tune into. Yes, that's absolutely right. Because awareness allows everything. Whatever appears in awareness is in awareness, and awareness itself isn't choosing, isn't deciding, isn't judging, isn't leaving some things out and other things letting in. Awareness is accepting, loving, joyous, peaceful, clear, but it's not really a thing. So we say, well, what is awareness? And when we talk about it, and this is the tricky thing about this because words are meant for defining things. But is awareness a thing? Well, not really. It's like an empty space that has no features of its own or, um, or a blank page that has nothing written on it yet or, uh, or a blank canvas with nothing painted on it yet or, uh, or a blank tape with nothing recorded on it yet. But unlike those examples, Awareness keeps its quality of emptiness when something appears in its space, and it keeps its quality of blankness when something is written on it, or its quality of silence when sound is recorded on it. Yeah, an analogy that sometimes people use is it's a little bit like a mirror. It reflects whatever is in front of it, but it doesn't take on. When you put a face in front of a mirror, uh, the mirror doesn't become a face. It's just reflecting it. and and it doesn't hold on to the face. It doesn't say, hey, I like that face and that face, hey, get away. You know, uh, awareness just reflects exactly what's in front of it. And that way, it's kind of an a, um, introduction to unconditional love and acceptance because it doesn't have preferences. It doesn't reject one thing and grasp another. So in order to become awareness, to be awareness, you have to let go of that constant, I like, I don't like, I prefer this, I don't prefer that. And that's one of the entrance points to awareness is just the ability to totally welcome and accept what is. Yes, and that's exactly why it feels so good to be aware of awareness itself because of that quality of joy and peace and love and total acceptance. And it's not that we are accepting something. It's we're looking inside at the part of us that's already accepting. And that's awareness itself. And it's not even an it. Uh, it it's not even really a noun. It's more like a verb. It's more like awareing. It's something that's happening and that we notice is already happening. I like that because a verb is only exists in the, in the now. It's, it's, it doesn't have a shelf life. You know, a, na a noun is a thing that you can define and hold or look at, whereas a verb is it's a process that's only existing in this exact instant. Right. And it's always going on or it's ongoing. Yeah, yeah. No. You know, um, I like the idea of defining awareness because as you define something, and we're throwing words at it, and we're throwing poetic descriptions at it. Uh, it it's kind of a, a seduction into being able to experience it. You know, when, when you look at something that's beautiful or you read poetry about something, it helps you to remember an experience. And as you and I define awareness in a lot of different ways, um, through intellectual discussion, through poetry, through images. My hope is that the listeners will start to tap into and remember that experience because it's a little bit contagious when you have one person who's in awareness or describing it. It can trigger that same vibration, that same experience in somebody else. So one of the things I thought we'd do is define different terms that people use for awareness and how they may be similar or different than what we're talking about. And words I hear a lot nowadays are witness, like witness consciousness, mm -hmm. or mindfulness. And I thought maybe we would talk about how we see witness consciousness or mindfulness as similar 
or different than the term we're using called awareness. So what are your, your thoughts about that, Brian? Well, I think that witness consciousness is certainly very, very similar to awareness because awareness is simply what's noticing our experience. And you could say witnessing is a definition of that. Um, the tricky part is, and you alluded to that when you're talking about nouns and words and stuff, is that we think of witnessing consciousness as a thing that's separate from us. Some part that's in us, like a little, a little person inside our brains that's doing this. And that's not really the case. It really is us. It is everyday garden variety awareness that we are experiencing all the time. If we're aware of something, we're aware. And awareness is us. When we say I, that's what we're talking about, our awareness. The other thing with witness consciousness or that term witnessing is, for me, it it connotes a little bit of an intellectual view of things. Mm -hmm. Like you're witnessing your thoughts or you're witnessing something. Whereas I find awareness to me feels more like a full body experience. It, it's not an intellectual, it's not a part of my brain that is watching. It's kind of me. <laughs> it's like the whole experience of reality is being witnessed. Mm -hmm. And that might just be my take on it. But if the word witness works for you, and that connotes a full body experience of, of your true nature, then use that word, you know, because really everybody has to find their own words, their own images, their own ideas that help them to connect with the beingness of awareness. Yeah. And I think that that's going to be different for different folks. It is. It's going to be different for everybody. Uh, but I think that as you're listening to us talk about it, if, if you are looking inside and asking the question, what's noticing this? Or what's this appearing in? That that will actually go a long way to, help, to helping you point your mind in the direction of awareness itself. That's, that's one of the amazing techniques in your book, Awareness Games. You know, what's noticing this? That's a very simple question. Mm -hmm. You know, and for me, that question worked a lot better than the question, who am I? You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the normal Ramana Maharshi question that was really uh, given as a way to help people be aware of themselves and aware of awareness. But the question, well, what's noticing that? or what's this appearing in was a better trigger for me to get back to that place of being awareness. Yeah, that was a better trigger for me too, even though it means the same thing as who am I, or at least as Ramana Maharshi meant when he taught about it back in the middle of the last century. But whatever question helps you to point your mind back to the background, to whatever everything is appearing in. That will do it, whether it be who am I or what am I or what's noticing this or what is this appearing in or any variety of what works for you. And Jonathan, when you brought this up about, I think that works better for me, that's really the key to a lot of what we're talking about because you or all you folks who are listening, it's what works for you. You know, it's not what the authorities say. It's not what the spiritual teachers or gurus say. It's you try it and see if that works. And when that works for you, play with it. Exactly, exactly. So there's also this term, which is very popular nowadays, of mindfulness. Right. And, you know, everybody's into mindfulness. You can find it in corporations. You can find it in the magazines. And... I'm wondering if there's a difference between mindfulness and awareness and what that difference is. Of course, these are all words, so it's really just a matter of how you relate to it. But for me, the word mindfulness kind of connotes being aware of something 
like my thoughts or my body, but it has less emphasis on being aware of awareness. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much the way I think of it. Now, certainly mindfulness is absolutely great, and there have been a lot of studies that have shown how helpful it is to reduce stress and other benefits. So mindfulness is really, really a terrific movement in our culture, and I'm glad that people are looking into it. But I always thought that there was a missing piece, because pretty much exactly what you said is that it's focusing on what we're mindful of. Okay, this is a thought that's coming through. Uh, this is an experience. This is a sound that I'm hearing. And it, it doesn't, or at least often the way it's taught, not all the time, it often, it doesn't bring our attention to awareness itself. So awareness is the missing piece of mindfulness, I think, because it's not the content of awareness, it's awareness itself. And it's not a thing or a concept. It's not something you can see or think of. As a matter of fact, I often say, you can't see it, you can only be it. Right, that's a nice phrase. You know, but I think mindfulness is a step in the right direction. And sometimes you want to take a mini step because it's harder, it's easier than taking a big step. So like, let's say I'm mindful of my body or I'm mindful of my feet. You know, I'm watching my feet, I'm feeling my feet, I'm feeling how they sound, how they touch the ground. And that helps focus me. And then from there, I can take the next step and ask, well, what's noticing my feet? Absolutely. And there I get into the uh, state of really being aware of awareness. But I find that being mindful of something is often an introductory step to being able to be aware of awareness. You know, jumping directly to awareness itself can be difficult if I haven't kind of slowed down and focused on what's happening right now in this moment with me. That's right. And as a matter of fact, um, probably we'll be touching on that a little later in the method that we use uh, at the end of the uh, podcast, because I think you're right. I do think you actually have to start with the content of awareness. Yeah. And then work your way back from what's in awareness to awareness itself. And um, I'll, I'll walk everybody through that a little later on. Uh-huh. Great, great. Well, you know, I'd like to um, seduce you and me and our audience into experiencing a little bit of the poetry of awareness. You know, I find that when you talk about awareness in, in simple phrases, it often induces or helps, you, helps people to remember that experience. So I thought I'd, I would uh, make some statements about what I think awareness is, you know, just short poetic statements. And if one particularly hits you, Brian, we can talk about that. But just saying these statements and listening to them can often help me remember that experience uh, very directly and in a very immediate and, and powerful way. So here are some statements I've written down about what I think awareness is. Okay. Um, Awareness is the passive collection of all my senses. Awareness is the effortless receiving of sound and sights and thoughts and emotions. Awareness is seeing without the ego. Awareness is listening without the ego judging or interpreting. Yes, and probably a little later, and maybe we'll devote a whole other subject, a whole other podcast to this. What is ego? That's actually a, a fascinating topic, as you know, because, you know, in this moment, there's just you and me being aware of sights and sounds and sensations. That's right. 
And this idea of ego is a completely made up concept we have about ourselves, which has in this second no actual reality other than our imagination and story. Yeah, it's like a running commentary on our experience that's, that's going through. Or it's like, it's like watching a movie with what do they have it when they have the director talk about, uh, about what's happening in the scene. Right, the director's cut. You know, yeah. giving comments on exactly what's happening, which are unnecessary. Right, so you can watch the scene with the comments, or you can, you can uh, turn those comments off, and that's direct experience. Yeah. So yeah. it's the running commentary that's analyzing and defining everything, as opposed to just pure experiencing. Right, right. So in that way, awareness feels like being let out of a small cage. <laughs> yeah. Because without that commentary, without that restricted sense of ego and I, there's a sense of spacious, boundless openness and even love for this moment. Yep. So awareness is born anew in each and every moment. Awareness is noticing what's happening without any judgment. Awareness is what's left when I take away everything that it's not. <laughs> and awareness is a shift in identity from being a little wave to being the big ocean. That's a really good one in two ways. First of all, the shift in identity. That's really key because as we were saying before, the, we identify with these thoughts with these this running commentary this self-definition but the shift in identity to pure background awareness is a change in how we feel who we are which is open which is free which is relaxed which is pure which is clear and the other part of that um it's that ocean analogy is such a fantastic analogy um, because it's like a wave that thinks, oh, I am a separate wave. I am a special wave. I am individual and I am separate from the ocean. And then not realizing that in a second or two, it's just going to subside and rejoin the entire ocean. And, and in fact, was never separate from the ocean or any of the other waves at all. Yes, yeah, so that, that wave just had a big imagination. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. It was a wave with a running commentary. Yes, yes. A lot of foam. Anyway. <laughs> you know, I find it interesting that in the spiritual field, we've both been at this for uh, many decades, and it seems like there's now more of a sense of things moving towards awareness. You know, in, in the spiritual marketplace, there's so many teachers who are talking about non-dual and Vedanta and, and uh, the idea that awareness is where it's at. And one of the things that I'm hoping in this podcast is that as we talk about what's happening in the field in general, we will come to some conclusions, you know, just like science. If you have a lot of people studying a subject, they finally conclude that the Higgs boson is like this, and the quarks are like this, and we'll be able to define certain terms and methods that bring people to an even deeper understanding of what awareness is and how to get there, and even more importantly, how to integrate it into all the little aspects of daily life. Because for a lot of people, they tap into it when they meditate or on retreat, but for me, what I want to do is I want to tap into it while I'm having a conversation with my wife, while I am walking to the car, while I am on my computer, because that's really, to me, the cutting edge of where we need to take this so that it's not something separate from our life. It's a thread that is woven into every moment of our life. And for me, that's really the exciting cutting edge that I like to explore. Absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, and it's not something that only happens during meditation. Yeah. But 
it's good to do it during meditation to look at awareness, to be aware of awareness, to be awareness during meditation or during any time that's easy and peaceful and non-stressful because you got to start easy. It's like training wheels. Exactly. You know, first, you, you do it under the best circumstance possible. Absolutely. Then you take off the wheels and see if you can go for a ride uh, and be awareness while you're walking. Sure. Yes. Or while you're reading or while you are um, sorting something or dishes. Or, and then gradually you start doing it. Well, let's say you have to give a presentation at work. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely harder. But if right before you give that presentation, you ask yourself, what is aware of this moment? It will help. But the more you practice in, the, in times when it's easy, then the easier it will get when things are a little difficult. And you do it by degrees until eventually you're doing it all the time, all day long, difficult or easy. Yeah, yeah. So one of the reasons we want people to subscribe and tell their friends and family is if you create a group of people and ideas and concepts around you about awareness, it does tend to trigger it. And part of our job is to harass you and remind you and, and <laughs> suggest that try this technique for the next week or two, see what it does for you. And uh, speaking of techniques, I hear that you have one for this week that might help people to experience it more and more often. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Jonathan. Sure. Basically, a lot of techniques or what I call awareness games are based on three basic questions. They're all variations of this question. And like we were talking about before, where you're starting with a content and working your way back, this method walks you through that process. So this method is based on three questions. And what I'll do is I will walk you through these questions. I'll tell you what they are first, and then we'll go into detail about each particular question. So let's just take a moment, and I would recommend closing your eyes if you're not driving, and uh, listening along, and following inside, and seeing where it goes. So the questions are these. One, what is in awareness? Two, what is awareness? Three, what is aware? So let's take those one by one. The first question is, what is in awareness? So that simply means, what am I aware of? What are the contents of awareness? What sights, sounds, smells, sensations, objects, thoughts, or emotions swim into my field of awareness at any given moment. And by any given moment, I mean right now. What's in awareness? Let's take an inventory. Let's see. There's the sounds outside and in the room. The sound of a voice. Maybe there's a breeze on my face. Maybe there's a feeling of my body against my clothes and against the chair. There's a taste inside my mouth. There are colors and shapes and lights coming in through my eyes, or maybe the darkness behind my eyelids if my eyes are closed. There are thoughts running through my head. There are emotions playing through my mind and body. So that's what is in awareness. It's an inventory of what's happening right now. What are the objects of awareness? What's in my experience? Then the next question is, what is awareness? 
So you're asking yourself, okay, I know what I'm aware of, but what actually is this thing called awareness? Look at it. Try to find it. Become aware of it. This is awareness becoming aware of awareness. So it's a slight step back from the content of awareness to awareness itself by getting curious about awareness. What is it? What are its qualities? What is its nature? What does it feel like? And the third question is, what is aware? Who or what is it appearing to? Who or what is doing the awaring? Is it my body? But I'm aware of my body, aren't I? So what's aware of it? Is it my thoughts? But I'm aware of my thoughts, aren't I? So what's aware of them? So this is the shift. It's like a tiny backward step or a little turnaround from what's noticed to what is noticing. So let's say your answer to the question, what is aware, turns out to be, I am. Good. Then ask, who am I? Or better, what am I? Or what is this me? Then continue with more questions like, am I my name? Okay, well, who has a name? Am I my body? Maybe, but who has a body? Maybe I'm my thoughts. Okay, could be, but who has thoughts? And with these questions, the idea isn't, to come up with an answer. The idea is to ask a question that triggers a shift in perspective from the foreground to the background. Be the background. Let the foreground be whatever it wants to be. You don't have to fix, change, or anything in the foreground or in the content of awareness. Just turn your attention back to what is aware. And what is aware? Awareness is aware. Be awareness. I don't know if uh, it's true for our listeners, but I'm feeling really high right now. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> you you put some some drugs in the Kool Aid there, and. Uh, <laughs> It feels uh, pretty good. And so I think uh, if somebody followed that, they would probably feel either uh, very high or very confused. And if you're in the second category, then keep listening and we'll give you new techniques each week until you're not confused and you're getting a really clear picture of how to get into the place of being awareness more and more easily, more and more quickly, more and more uh in a secure stable way that's right and we've got a lot of different techniques methods games ways to play with your mind ways to point it towards the awareness that you are ways to invoke that relaxed clear peaceful open feeling of being aware So I think that's good for this week. We're going to be exploring ideas, methods each week. Please subscribe. We have a website, awarenessexplorers.com. 
We appreciate your questions, your comments, uh, your snide remarks, whatever you're, you want to do. <laughs> and um, we will look forward to playing with you and harassing you and prodding you week after week and, and hopefully creating a field of awareness that we all dive into and swim around and enjoy each and every week. Sounds great, Jonathan. Okay, take care. And keep exploring. Thank you for listening to Awareness Explorers. To learn more, you can check out our website at awarenessexplorers.com. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app. And we'd love it if you would post a review. And please share our link on Facebook and with family and friends. Because knowing yourself as awareness is the greatest gift you can give yourself or someone you love.